Hello, welcome back to another video. My name is Stacy, and today we are going to talk about books I'm super excited for that are coming out in quarter three of 2023. So that is July, August, and September. Now, I have a huge long list, especially for July, because that is right around the corner here, of books that are coming out. But I had to narrow it down. I limited myself to two graphics a month, and that puts us at 16 books for the month. Obviously, I'm not going to get to all of these. Obviously, all of these books are subject to change dates-wise, cover-wise, to the whims of the authors and their publishers. I have no say whatsoever in that. For August and September, I do have some ones that are more recent finds for me because I wanted to try to fill my graphics this time. I have done this um, for the past couple months. I will link the playlist up above if you have not seen my previous ones. But in the past, I was like, okay, well, when we get to the later months, if I don't have a full eight for the graphic, then I'll just do like seven or I'll, I'll just make it work. But this but this time I was like, no, I'm going to push and I'm going to fill up all six graphics. And so some of these I'm not as highly anticipatory tour towards, but I'm still intrigued by. Like, I didn't put anything on here that I wasn't interested in reading. But let's just get into it because it's a lot. Like I mentioned, we have 16 books for July, August, and September each. So... We will start with July. All right. Ah. So coming out on July 1st, we have Role Playing by Kathy Yardley. This is, a, I want to say the, they're in their 40s, so it's an older um, couple romance. This, however, I already have on my Kindle because this was a part of June's. Um, if you're a part of uh, Amazon Prime, they have Prime First Reads, which is new books that are coming out soon. And you can pick like one a month. And um, I don't always get them because I just pick books that I'm actually interested in reading. But role playing was one of the options available. So I actually got it around the middle of June. It popped on my Kindle. So that's super fun. I don't know when I'll get to it, but I'm super excited that I was able to get it. But it does come out on July 1st for everybody else. Then on July 11th, I just had to throw out there the new special edition or traditionally published edition of Barbarian's Mate by Ruby Dixon is out. This is six in Ice Planet Barbarians. These covers are so gorgeous. I love them. This is the, and this is also the first of quite a few books that are coming out on the 11th. I have a lot more in my list that aren't shown here as well. But next we have You With The View by Jessica Joyce. This is a debut and this sounds really cute and I'm really interested in it. So basic premise from what I remember with this is our heroine finds like love letters that her grandmother wrote with some gentleman and she posts about them and then it, it and they obviously never met because this gentleman that she's writing these letters with is not a heroine's grandfather. So she writes about or she posts about it and it goes viral I think on TikTok and then <sighs> Someone from high school who she didn't get along with or was like the popular guy or something like one of those tropey things um, responds and says that this other gentleman is his grandfather. So they had planned to take this road trip together, their grandparents, that never happened. And so she decides to um, go on the same road trip in honor of her grandmother, who has since passed, with this uh, older gentleman dude. And then his grandson 
comes along. So it's a romance between her and his grandson while they like reminisce, reminisce about the like fleeting romance between their grandparents. I know that sounds a little weird, but it sounded super cute and it's like road trippy and it sounds like a perfect summer read to me. Then we have the start of, also on the 11th, of Charis Michaels, Karis Michaels' new series, Hidden Royals. The first is Say Yes to the Princess. Um, and if I remember correctly, I think it's uh, the hero in this book is like hidden Russian royalty. I think it's Russian royalty. But I'm excited for a new book from her. Then also on the 11th, we have another debut, this time Forget Me Not by Julie Soto. This has been on my list since practically the beginning of the year. I don't really remember much about it outside of when I first saw it. I was like, that sounds interesting. I'm super into it. I know Julie is a pretty prominent fanfic writer. And so this is her first like published works that's not fanfic. So I'm excited. Then we have probably my most anticipated release for the 11th, which is Roar of the Storm King by Alessa Thorne. This is the third and final book in this little trilogy of the Lost Fae Kings, which is a part of her overarching Fae universe, of which I know she has other spinoffs and other series in this world planned. This is the dragon one, and I am excited. I haven't read the first two books in this series yet, but that's because I wanted to be able to binge the entire trilogy when it was out. So now is the time to binge. And I think Alessa Thorne is super bingeable. So if you have not tried her, she is one of the authors that I will go to bat for. Please read Alessa Thorne. Then on the 13th, we have Kissing a Stranger by Lacey Black. This is the fourth book in the multi-author Kiss Kissing Games series. I've read um, the first couple books in this series and I have super enjoyed them so far and I can't wait to read more. All of the authors in this were new to me. I picked up this series because the first book is my favorite trope, which I did in a reading vlog. You can check up here. And... Yeah, I'm excited to continue on and see all these bridesmaids and bridesgroom, no, bridesmaids and groomsmen get their AGAs. Then on the 18th, we have another debut. I have a lot of debuts this quarter. This is the, I'm assuming the Hassad Air by Sarah Hashem. This is the first book in her Scorched Throne series. This is a high fantasy romance based off of Egyptian mythology. That's like two of my top things right there. I am so excited for this. I remember reading the blurb and I got like through the first couple sentences and I was like on my TBR. I don't know what's going I don't know what else is going on. I stopped reading. I was like on my TBR. This one I can see myself picking up as soon as it drops. I I'm obsessed with this cover. I just, I'm a history girly, especially when it comes to ancient history. I, when I binge TV, most of the time it's National Geographic or like the older History Channel shows before History Channel kind of stopped doing history stuff. Um, and I just, I am, so, I can't tell you how excited I am for this book and it's a debut and it's the start of a series and I just, tell me more please. All right, so there is our first graphic done. A lot of books I'm excited for, as you can tell. So let's just move on. So on the 18th, we have Dark Water Daughter by H.M. Long. This is the first book in her Winter Sea series. This is another fantasy romance. This has pirate hunters and she I remember the heroine has like storm magic and I was just like okay sign me up I'm here for that also on the 18th we have the freedom in captivity by M.L. Philpitt and this is the fourth book in her fractured ever after series these are mafia romance books with uh fairy tale retellings this is Rapunzel and this I was catching hints 
of what was happening in the first book. And I was like, oh my gosh, after I read the first book and loved it, I read it for the Mafia Romance Readathon this year. You can also check that out in this vlog. I read the first two books in this series. I, I'm so excited to continue this series. Then on the 25th, we have another little group of books. So first we have Not That Duke by Eloisa James. This is the third book in her Would Be Wallflower series, which is her most recent series. Super excited for that. I love the red hair on this cover. I think she is gorgeous. Then Jackie Lyle is finally coming out with another book, also on the 25th, Four Weddings to Fall in Love. This is the first book in her Weddings with the Mock series, of which she has spoiled us in the newsletter. The Mock family has four brothers, so we are most likely getting four books. I cannot wait. I also want to throw out there because it's not really mentioned later on, but she also mentioned in a newsletter recently that she's planning another novella series to come out in fall, and that's all I know, it, or at least it'll start releasing in fall, but I was like, September's fall, but we have no other information outside of... It's kind of similar vibes to Kim's convenience store. So I'm here for it. I will read anything Jackie Lowe writes. Also on the 25th, we have Just a Few Fake Kisses by J.C. Lee. This is the third book in her Hannah Trio series. This is her, her um, current... Uh, Harlequin series. I'm a super big fan of these books. This specific uh, trio series, they're all in orchestral music. So that's super fun. And then the final book I have for the 25th is Kilt to Order by Susanna Nix. This is the first book in a new series. All I've seen is new series, new series. No idea what the new series is called, but this is a... Um, person who does like the Scottish Highland Games and then a bookish nerdy heroine. You know, I'm just here for that matchup with the Scottish twist, which is super fun. Then on the 26th, we get A War Around Us by Kate Dossel. This is the second book in the Moretti Crime Family series. I'm super excited for this. This is the follow-up to A Bullet Between Us, which is still one of my favorite Mafia books. I read that for the first Mafia Romance Readathon. It's been a long wait, but I am so ready for a war between or a war around us. I'm so excited. I don't know if I will get the, to this before the end of July because it comes out so late in the month, but I definitely want to make sure that I have time to savor this one once it's out because. I'm so excited for this. And then the final book I have for July is Kissing My Soulmate by Evan Grace. This is the final book in that multi-author Kissing Games series. So I'm excited for that one. So I'm going to take a drink of coffee because I've been doing a lot of talking this morning and then we will move on to August. And yes, I have my super cute Mandalorian mug. In case you were wondering, I found that at Big Lots. Big Lots is like my go-to for super unique mugs because you don't see them anywhere else. Okay, on to August. So August 1st, we have The Bewitching Hour by Ashley Poston. Now this is going to be YA. Um, I don't know how young, but I'm very excited for this because, um, I've read Ashley Poston before and I've enjoyed her books, but this is what they're calling a Buffy prequel novel. And this is going to be set around Tara and her life before she joins, uh, the Scooby gang. So if you don't know who Tara is. Tara is the witch that um, Willow meets season four. I know she's there for season five because season five is glory. I think they meet in season four. Maybe they meet in season three. It's when they're in college. No, no, because season three is when they graduate high school. 
because season three's big bad is the mayor. So yeah, they meet in season four. Yeah, because that's Riley and in the initiative. Okay, yeah. Pulling my Buffy knowledge out here. I haven't had to use that trivia knowledge in a while. So they meet in season four. Um, they are a sapphic couple. And Tara eventually dies in season seven. Or no, season six. Season six. At the end of season six. And that's how we get Willow. Evil Willow is the big bad. But it's it'll be exciting because I know she kind of loves she kind of lived with this like weird culty type situation so I'm intrigued I'm intrigued to get more lore into Tara's character for sure then on August 8th we have quite a few new releases so first is uh Amy Rose Bennett's third book in her Byronic book club series which is Tall Duke and Scandalous I love the covers that are coming out for this series. All of them have like bookshelves in the back and I love me a bookish heroine plus throw in historical and it's just great. And then we have another debut, surprise, surprise, on August 8th and this is called Text Appeal. Now I first saw this on like debut, uh, I found a website that's like debut authors for 2023 or something like that and it had a list of books and I had on there Amber Roberts, but it was uh, the something guide to sexting. But apparently that name has since changed and it is now a text appeal. Um, but this is a woman in STEM who ends up taking a job like think old school phone operator, except it's through text. <laughs> so, and it's her romance with someone I think she knows in real life, but then she also has this like, uh, sexting relationship with as well but they don't know that it is each other kind of a thing then we have uh educated by Nellie Wilson this is the second book in her museology series this is she's calling a millennial love story uh I thought this first book was super cute it was like with a museum creator cre curator which is why it's called Museology, but this one, I think we're not really dealing with history anymore, but it's kind of set um, with a bartender. But I'm super excited to read more, and the fact that it's a millennial romance, I'm kind of here for, um, because I myself am an elder millennial. Then we have a couple new books coming out on the 15th. The first I'm going to talk about is Codename Charming by Lucy Parker. This is the second book in her Palace Insider series. The first book um, kind of made the rounds on Booktube and Bookstagram when it came out. And that was Battle Royale or something like that. And it was like the baker and then somebody who I think was like a guard at the palace or something like that. But it had a super cute cover. But I'm excited for the follow up to that. Then we have on the 15th as well, Managing the Matthews by Haley Wen Wenger. Um, this is another debut, but this one has also been on my list for a little bit as well, because this is, she, the heroine is like a manager of some type, but she's like known for managing the Matthews brothers. And they seem like they're kind of kind of like a Kardashian. They've got a reality show, show situation, but um, like one of them's a popular actor and they're all like famous in their own right. And then they have this reality show about the three brothers and she kind of manages them. And so this is her romance with one of the three brothers and I'm super excited for it. It sounded super fun. And I'm excited to see all these like reality show inspired romances come out. I don't watch the Kardashians, but I, I do dabble in some reality TV shows. Then on the 21st, we have In Which Winnie Halifax is under Utterly Ruined by Alexandra Vasti. This is the third book in her Halifax Hellions novella series. The only way to get these books is to join her newsletter. So I will link her website down below for you if you are interested. These are super fun. Then on the 22nd, we have another debut, and that is Curves for Days by Laura Moher. This is the first book in her Big Love from Galway series. Um, this sounded super cute. It is a romance um, 
with so the heroine is needing to like refurbish re renovate her house kind of situation and it's her romance with her contractor which is another tropey setup situation that i'm a fan of also on the 22nd we have an earl to remember by stacy reed this is the second book in her unforgettable love series um this has been on my TBR since she announced it. I have had it pre-ordered since it was available for pre-order. And I, I will read anything Stacey Reed writes. But this specifically has me intrigued because it is an overboard retelling, which is one of my favorite movies. Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell are just like one of the ultimate Hollywood couples. Plus, my boss and I quote overboard at least once a week, if not more, <laughs> at work. <laughs> and it, it, most of it, most of the quoting is when she's like kind of out of it mentally and they're like throwing the blueberries at her and she's like, oh, blah, 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 blah. And so we do that at work when like our brains are fried. Then on the 23rd, we have Magic Strikes by Alona Andrews, the third book in the Kate Daniels series. Wait a second, what? Kate Daniels has already came out, right? No, this isn't a new release. It is because this is the graphic audio and I'm super excited for it. So did my little switcheroo work? <laughs> I don't know. I felt a little silly saying it, but anyway, we will move on. Then on the 28th, we have another debut. I'm telling you, this quarterly releases is chock full of debuts here. We have When the Duke Loved Me by Lydia Lloyd. This is the first book in her Rate Chronicles series. And if you do not know Lydia Lloyd, she is like one of the top, in my opinion, historical romance bookstagrammers. She always has like super specific micro trope posts. She cracks me up. She has great historical romance memes. And I'm super excited to read the book that she has created. I as because I know, I know what she loves from historical romance. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see a historical romance written in like today's world with that much love and care and understanding of what historical romance is. So I'm just very excited for it. Then also on the 28th, we have Emmeline Warden's second book. Her debut came out um, earlier this year, and that is Seducing a Spy. And this is actually the first book in a new series, London's Greatest Spies. So I'm intrigued. I enjoyed the first book. I gave it like four stars. I was a little sad that we aren't continuing in that series, but I'm excited to see where she goes with this new series. So maybe we'll get like books in every other series or something like that, but I'm excited for more. And then we have the 29th, August 29th, another debut. My roommate is a vampire, Jenna Levine. This is total cover, cover by, cover TBR. <laughs> I am a vampire girly debut. I thought the artwork was super cute. I like this like old style comic artwork covers. And I don't know. I just think it's super intriguing and I'm here for more vampire romances. Plus this kind of feels like it might be like a rom-com vampire romance. Then we have Assistant to the Villain, another debut. This one for Hannah Nicole Marrer. And this one is fantasy and our heroine needs a job. And so she becomes an assistant. And as you know, she's doing her job. She kind of realizes that the person she's an assistant for is the villain of the world, <laughs> but is he really the villain? So I'm, I'm intrigued. It sounds super cute and I'm excited to read more. Then we have uh, My Temptation by T.L. Swan. This is the first book in her Kingston Lane series. Now I've only read, um, the, uh, Miles Family book with, my brain is saying Carter Mahoney and that is not right. Uh, Tristan. <laughs> 
Tristan and Claire. Oh my gosh. It's because Jen loves both of those books so much. And so they like have melded together in my brain, which is a really weird meld of Tristan Miles and Carter Mahoney. But okay, we will move on. But um, I'm intrigued to read more from her. I definitely enjoyed um, the book that I read. And this one sounds interesting because it sounds like the hero, hero and the heroine kind of have a run-in or something. And then she vows to hate him. And then he ends up being like her next door neighbor or something. But she's like super into him. So I don't know how hateful it is, but I'm intrigued. Then on the 30th, we have Victoria Aveline's next book. This is Ruling Sixth Hand by, or not, but yeah, by Victoria Aveline. I already said that. This is the seventh book in Clacania. Clacanian. I always, it's just it's such a tongue twister for me, but I'm super excited. This is not where I thought she was going next. I am a member of her Patreon and we have seen sneak peeks of some fan art for this book. And I am even more excited. I will, I'm a big fan of Victoria Aveline. She is one of my favorite sci-fi authors. This is one of my favorite sci-fi series. I have all of them in paperback so far and I'm super excited to read more. So there's it. There's August. We're, we're done for August. So I'm going to take another drink of coffee and then we will jump into September, which I will give you a little teaser. Surprisingly has a lot of purple book covers. I don't know if that's just me because I like the color purple or if that's just the tone that people are going for for September overall. But I just thought it was interesting when I was putting together my graphics. I was like, a lot of this is purple. Okay, so... September 2nd, we have The Winter Phase Bride. This has been pushed back a, um, a month or so, but this is by Lisa Kumar. This is the first book in her Brides of the Fae series. I've had this on my TBR so long, I don't really remember much outside of he's a winter-based fae. And I'm intrigued. Then we have On the Third, Hex and the City by Kate Johnson. This one sounded super, super cute. Um, our heroine is like a witch, so it sounds kind of like in that cozy paranormal rom-com situation. And she has hair like Rapunzel, it like magically grows. And somehow she accidentally puts magic into something she shouldn't have. And then a fake magician, so one of the like Vegas show ma magician type people, buys something from her shop and ends up becoming cursed. So it's a romance between someone who has actual magic and someone who pretends to have magic. And I thought that was super cute. I'm not sure if it's any way related to last year's release from her uh, Hex Appeal, but the covers have very similar art styles with the same purple background. So I don't know if it's sec technically second in that series or not, but I'm intrigued. I thought it sounded super cute. Then we have on September 5th, Things We Left Behind by Lucy Score. This is the third book in her Knock em Out series, which I know is super popular. Okay, on the 12th, we have no cover for this, but I will get touch, I will touch base on this. So this is the fifth book in Fractured Ever Afters um, by M.L. Philpitt. We mentioned book four in July, The Freedom in Captivity. Now she has not, she has released, it's not untitled anymore. It's now T-S-I-S, -S, which is, <laughs> so the something in something, I'm guessing. Um, not, not, yeah, okay, that's weird. Because something also starts with S. So the blank in blank. Um, but she said that she is not, what we know is that this is the Little Mermaid retelling, of which I'm pretty sure is... Uh, the heroine's little sister, who's mute, in the first book, um, The Hunt and Illusion, and then Eric, or something similar to that, who is, who, uh, Aurora, our heroine in the second book, Craving and Slumber, is supposed to marry, but she falls in love with Rosa instead. 
So I think it's them because all, all we know is in, she has said it's the Little Mermaid retelling and she has a huge list of triggers that she has to get ready, but she's not releasing the cover. She's not releasing the blurb or anything because it might spoil something that happens in the Freedom of Captivity. So we'll have to wait until after the Freedom of Captivity comes before we can get any information on this fifth book. This is probably one of my most anticipated books because I am a Little Mermaid fangirl. But yeah, I'm super excited for it, whatever it is. I'm, I'm here for more M.L. Philpitt. She is one of my new favorite authors, especially in the Mafia realm. Then also on the 12th, we have I Like Big Dukes and I Cannot Lie. This is a huge historical romance anthology. I pre-ordered this back when you could pre-order it for 99 cents. I think it has since popped up to the normal price of $5.99, but I pre-ordered this one because it has a Stacey Reed novella in it. So I hopped on it while it was on sale. Then on the 15th, we have um, the first of a new series by Ava Ross. This is Love at First Orc, book number one. As you can tell, the full cover is not out yet. And this is Orcus Pocus. And this is Orc Monster Romances. And this one sounded super cute. It sounds like, I couldn't tell if the heroine was human or just not an orc, but they're both teachers at like a magical creature school kind of situation. Then on the 19th, we have another debut, and that is Every Wish Way by Shannon Bright. This comes out on the 19th. Um, this one was not quite fairy god mother godfather but like uh the heroine somehow gets this guy and he can grant her three wishes and he seems kind of like a playboy type thing um but it's I th i'm guessing it's going to be the romance between her and this person who's granting her wishes so i don't know if he's like a fairy godfather or a djinn or a genie or what exactly he is but he's granting her wishes so I thought that was going to be super cute. Oh, and then I do remember she's trying to wish things to bring a certain person into her life that has like the traits of like Mr. Darcy. So we're going to have like a Pride and Prejudice obsessed heroine too, which is also super fun. Also on the 19th, we have Tempting the Player by Rebecca Jenshack. I'm assuming this is the final book in the Campus Wallflower series. This is Jane's book. I still have no idea who Jane is going to be paired with. I cannot wait though. Uh, this is our fourth roommate of our main group of girls. I'm assuming this is the end of the series, but I've loved all three books so far. So I'm excited for this and I already have it pre-ordered. All right, our last graphic. We're almost done. So also on the 19th, we have A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. This one is very intriguing. I've seen it pop up and recommended a lot on Goodreads. So there's some sort of advertising or situation going on. But this is a young adult fantasy, but it seems kind of bookish and they're doing research and they're at some sort of magical school for learning and something happens. I don't, I couldn't tell if it was like a high school situation or a more college situation, but it sounded intriguing. And you know, sometimes all those Goodreads ads get me. Let, let's be honest. Then also on the 19th, we have Cleet Cute by Meryl Wilms Wilsner. This is a sapphic romance and it sounds super cute. Um, these are, our two heroines are on the U.S. Women's World Soccer Team. And when one of them is injured, the other one gets brought in to kind of be her replacement while she heals and so there it's a rivals to lover situation and it sounded super cute and I feel like um I have not seen Ted Lasso but I've seen quite a few like soccer romances start to pop up because I feel like people are so obsessed with Ted Lasso so I think we're gonna get more soccer or for the Europeans football uh romances kind of hitting the sports romance genre which is fun 
Then on the 20th, we have The Ever King by L.J. Andrews. This is the first book in her The Ever Sees duet. Now this is connected to one of her other fan fantasy series, but the, she did say that you could read this as a standalone, but I mean, this is fantasy. We've got C, we've got a cursed prince kind of situation and I was just like I'm intrigued it sounds good uh, as you can tell I was really into the like water pirate fantasy romances that are popping up in, the, in this quarter so throw another one on there plus as we hit the end of September you'll see um more I think this is the only one I have on my list, but you'll start to see holiday romances come out. So the one that I have on my list is Three Holidays and a Wedding. Um, this is by Uzma, I'm sorry if I butcher your name, Hallelujah, and Marissa Stapley. This one sounded super intriguing and super cute. So there, this actually has a dual love story situation. Um, and it's two women who meet on a plane headed to I can't remember where they're going. I want to say Toronto, somewhere in Canada. Um, and then the plane has some sort of emergency and has to um, land. And they end up in some small town in the mountains, I think. But so we have um, one of the heroines is flying to this place to uh, go to her sister's wedding um, and her longtime crush or someone who's been pining after her is also on the plane as well as like the entire bridal party and then the other main heroine is heading um, to meet her boyfriend's family for the first time. So those are the situations of the two women while they are on the plane. When they land in this small little Christmassy town, it seems like, um, we have one romance between the one that's going to her sister's wedding and the guy that's been like pining after her forever. And then the other one who's going to meet her boyfriend's family has like a budding romance or potentially might start a romance with um her like like number one crush actor who's in town like filming like a Christmas movie or something like that is kind of what I got from it. I don't know. It was a little confusing and I wasn't reading too too much into it outside of to kind of get get the basic gist but I think there's gonna be some uh I don't know. It's called Three Holidays and a Wedding. So based on the cover, it looks like we're going to get Hanukkah and we're going to get Christmas. And then I'm not sure what the other holiday is. I think it might be Ramadan, but I'm not 100% sure on um, the more Middle Eastern Muslim holidays. But it's it's like one of those and it's the one that's represented at the top and I think that first heroine that's going to her sisters um is the one that's in that religion but I I thought that was super intriguing and it, it was cute that it had a dual storyline so I think that might work then this is also another little bit of a silly one but also on the 26th we have Crescent City 1 Crescent City 2 these are the new special edition paperbacks that are full artwork cover wraps. I am so excited for these. I think they are absolutely gorgeous and you'll get to have the whole artwork. And I'm just waiting for Barnes & Noble to have another pre-order sale so I can get these pre-ordered at a better discount. But I'm excited for both of those to come out and to get them on my shelves. Then also on the 26th, we have Piper Rain's new series, Something Like Hate. And this one is going to be the first book in the Chicago Grizzlies series. And the Chicago Grizzlies is an American football team. So super excited for that. And as you can tell, cover coming soon. Then the final book we have on my list is the second book in Ava Ross's Love at First Orc series. And this one is Orcishly Ever After. I didn't read the blurb for this one. I liked the first one, saw it was coming out, saw this one was also coming out. And I was like, oh, okay, two of them in the same month. Nice. So there's that. There's the 1810 three books <laughs> that I'm super excited for. Like I mentioned, there could be more books coming out that I just don't know are coming out yet or haven't been announced yet. 
or haven't been finalized. We don't have covers or even placeholder covers or anything like that. These are all subject to change to the author's whims, but we'll see how many of these I actually get to around release date. But speaking of, I'm going to throw this at you here. I have been thinking, I know like TBR redos are popular, um, but I have been thinking of going back and looking at anticipated releases and see what books I just never got to that I was super excited to come out. I was, I was debating on how long I want to go back. Like a year seems too short, but three years seems too long. And I don't, I don't know. And there's just something I don't like about the number two when I say two years. Like I would, like I would want to do three years or even more. So if you have an opinion on that and have, or have a preference of what you would like to see, I feel like some of these I haven't picked up because I still need to catch up in the series. So giving myself three years might be best. So I'm thinking of going back three years. Um, that might be something I start in 2024 and then I can go back to my 2021 videos or something like that. But I don't know. Let me know your opinion if you have thoughts on that. Um, if you'd like to also leave me a comment, let me know what you're most anticipated for the quarter. Definitely let me know if it isn't one of the books that I've mentioned here because I'd sure love to add it to my radar if it's not already on my even longer list I have <laughs> that wasn't mentioned in this video. Or if you'd like to leave me an emoji why don't you leave me something fall related because we hit September and I know summer's just starting, but I'm ready for fall. I've had a week of summer weather and I'm already over it. I just can't, I just can't handle more than 85 degrees. I just, I can't, I can't, I just can't. People go out and do stuff all summer because it's nice weather. And I'm like, I'd rather go out and do stuff when it's snowing and it's freezing than when it's hot like this but you know maybe I should just move to Canada or Alaska or one of the northern towns I don't know but anyway thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you all soon with another video